look at this circuit closely. We have multiple resistors, multiple loops, and multiple voltage sources. Suppose we want to find the current passing through and voltage drop across each of these resistors, then what should we do? Two laws that are fundamental and form the backbone of circuit analysis in this universe are Kirchhoff's current law, or KCL, which we also call as junction rule, and Kirchhoff's voltage law, or KVL, which we also call as loop rule. KCL says that the total current entering a junction or a node is equal to the total current leaving it because charge cannot appear or disappear at a junction. And KVL says that the sum of all voltages around any closed loop in a circuit is zero because the energy is conserved. As a first step, we choose a reference node, also called the ground, and we assume its voltage to be zero volt. This node serves as the baseline, and all other node voltages will be measured with respect to it. For this case, let us select this node as zero volts. Before we move further, always note that if we have a resistor and a current flows through it in this direction, then the resistor acts like a voltage eater, and this is called a voltage drop across the resistor. The voltage drops in the direction of the flow of the current. So, if the current goes left to right, the left side of the resistor is at a higher voltage and the right side is at a lower voltage. The amount of voltage it will eat depends on the value of the resistor and the current flowing through it and is given by V equals I times R. For example, if a 2 ampere current flows through a 5 ohms resistor, it will eat 5 times 2 or 10 volts. So, if this node is at 15 volts, then this node will be at 15 minus 10 or 5 volts. Great! Now for every other node in the circuit, we assign a variable to represent its voltage. If this is zero, and here we have plus 17 volts, then this node will be at 17 volts, right? Now because of this resistor, there will be a voltage difference between these two nodes. Right now, we don't know this difference, and therefore, we will label this node with voltage as V sub A. Then we will label this node with voltage as V sub B. Now, if this is V sub B, so this will also be V sub B, because there is nothing here except wire, whose resistance is assumed to be zero. Then, here we have plus 5 volts, and therefore, this node will be at VB plus 5 volts, right? Next, we apply KCL at each of the nodes that have unknown voltages. For that, assume there is some current that enters node A like this and label it I1. The direction doesn't matter right now because if the value comes out positive, the direction is correct. If it comes out negative, the actual direction will be opposite to this. Then a current going in this direction, like this, which we call I2, and finally, another current, I3, going in this branch, in this direction. Okay, KCL says that the total current entering a junction or a node is equal to the total current leaving it. So at this node, A, we have I1 equal to I2 plus I3 because I1 is entering the node, while both I2 and I3 are leaving it. We can rewrite it as I1 minus I2 minus I3 equals zero. Next, we will use KVL, or the loop rule, which says that the sum of all voltages around any closed loop in a circuit is zero. Let's label the loops first. We will call the left loop as loop one and the right loop as loop two. Let us start from the bottom left corner of loop one and moving in a clockwise direction, we will add up all the voltage rises and drops we encounter and set their total equal to zero. So first, we have a voltage rise of 17, and thus we write plus 17 volts. Then, because of this resistor, we have a voltage drop of I1 times 1 or I1, and thus write minus I1 here. Then, because of this resistor, we have a voltage drop of I3 times 4, and thus write minus 4I3 here. Then finally, because of this resistor, we have a voltage drop of I1 times 2, 
and thus write minus 2i1 here, and set their total equal to zero. Both of them together will give minus 3 times i1. Now, take both of them here to get 3i1 plus 4i3 equals 17. Noise. Then let us move on to loop 2. You know what? We can start from any point and complete the loop. So let us start from node A and move in a clockwise direction. Now, because of this resistor, we have a voltage drop of I 2 times 3 and thus write minus 3 I 2 here. Then notice here that as we move in this direction, the terminal is negative, which means a voltage drop of 5 volts, and hence write minus 5 here. Then, because of this resistor, we will have a voltage rise of I 3 times 4, because notice that we are moving like this, and the current is in the opposite direction, and thus we get a rise in voltage. So, write plus 4 times I3 here, and set their total equal to 0. This way, we now have three unknowns, I1, I2, and I3 and 3 equations, and thus we can solve them easily to find all the currents. Awesome! Now I am in no mood to solve a system of three equations. You can do it easily. By the way, I have made a video on solving a system of equations using matrix inverse, and the link is in the description. See, that was a smooth promotion of my previous video. After solving this, we get I1 as 3 amps, I2 as 1 amp, and I3 as 2 amps. So, what will be the voltage drop across this 1 ohm resistor? It will be 1 times I1 or 3 volts, right? So this 17 volts minus the voltage at node A, or V sub A, will be equal to 3. Thus V sub A equals 14 volts. Then look here. Voltage drop across this 4 ohm resistor will be 4 times I3 or 8 volts, right? So this V sub A, or 14 minus the voltage at node B, or V sub B, will be equal to 8. Thus V sub B equals 6 volts. Now let me know in the comments, what will be the voltage drop across these 2 ohms and 3 ohms resistors? See how easy circuit analysis becomes with the help of KCL and KVL. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.